six in his early years. He felt the call of God on his life, but it was the world to which he first turned and he pursued a legal career and was called as a barrister to the English bar in 1966. During the next 24 years, he practiced with this distinction at the Caribbean bar and was from 1969 to 1976 a magistrate and from 1976 to 1980 attorney general of Montserrat. Thereafter, he remained in private practice until 1989 when the final call of God in his life became irresistible. Accordingly, in December of 1990, he immigrated to the United States. Shortly thereafter, he entered United Bible College and Theological Seminary. And in 1996, he obtained the degree of Master of Theology and continued after that and obtained his doctorate in theology in 2000. By that time, Dr. Weeks was already a lecturer at the seminary, and his thirst for learning impelled him to continue to study. And in 2004, he obtained a further doctorate in religious education. Dr. Weeks has since that time been a pastor, a writer, and teacher, and he has published several books, including Understanding Forgiveness, Understanding the Doctrine of the Trinity, Understanding the Existence of God, Cry Out My Soul, Thoughts and Meditations, A Book of Poetry and Short Stories, War of the Worlds, and Escape or Perish the Rapture, which is his latest books. Once again, we're honored to have Dr. Weeks as our guest today. Now, we have a phrase for the day here about forgiveness. You don't get a second chance to die once. Forgiveness is not for the offender, remember. It's for the offended. Not forgiving the offender is like drinking poison and expecting the offender to die. So Dr. Weeks is going to explain uh, forgiveness and how you can get f- break free from this. Welcome again, Dr. Weeks. So good to have you on the show. Go ahead, Dr. Weeks. It's, it's good to be here. Great. Thank you, sir. It's good to be here. Thank you, sir. We are honored to have you. Now, Dr. Weeks, please explain to us the first thing, the meaning of Christian forgiveness. Yes. uh, You know, that's probably the most difficult thing that one can try to explain because of all the commands that God has made upon us, I mean, about loving one another, about giving and sharing and caring. The most difficult thing that I have have approached is the question of forgiveness. Because forgiveness in God's uh, kingdom, in, in God's way, means restoration. It means reconciliation. Just as God was in Christ reconciling us to him, and to our fellow men. And it is not at all easy, but I'll try an explanation of what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is removing the, the, the mark that you think you have suffered, the mark that was inflicted upon you by someone, the transgression, the trespass, the offense, the, the, the hardship, the whatever it was that your, your brother has done to you, you have to blot it out. Just as in the Old Testament, in order for you to get atonement, in order for you to get forgiveness from God, you had to at- have a, an animal you take before the priest, the priest kills it, you having identified yourself with it by laying your hands on it. And the, the, the word says that in Leviticus that the priest sprinkles the blood on the altar and he makes an atonement, a covering. So when God forgives us, God blots the sin out, the handwriting that, was a, that were against us, God nailed them to, Jesus nailed them to the cross, God blots them out, and they are remembered no more. So that when we forgive, we are restoring the offender or the would-be offender or the alleged offender. We are restoring him to a position that he occupied before. In other words, whatever, wherever he was before in your life, in your estimation, in your view, Mm -hmm. you restore him to that. And no lesser standard will do 
as far as God is concerned when he says, forgive your, those who sin or trespass against you. Amen. That's right. That's right. Great. Now, let me remind our callers, uh, you're welcome to call in if you have a question for Dr. Weeks or if you're not, you know, you're having problems understanding forgiveness or, you know, you need some advice on that. Please feel free to call in 407-894-1680. The phone lines are now open. And also, if you can't call in and you can text, you can text 407 583 7854. That's 407 583 7854. Great. Thank you for explaining that, uh, Dr. Weeks. Now, can forgiveness be afforded to the offender by a person not directly affected by the offender's action? Yeah, and that's a very, very important question, and I'm glad you asked it. Because, you know, from time to time, when I was writing this book, there was an incident in, I think, St. Lucia, where on a Christmas Eve, a person went into a, a church or s- some place where there were religious worship, and he hacked and killed or maimed some people. And one of the sisters, one of the nuns said, you know, I, I forgive him. And uh, from time to time, I'm sure you've heard and we've all heard someone say, who was not directly affected by the assault or by the wrongdoing says, well, I forgive him. And as I understand the, the biblical concept of forgiveness, it is the person to whom the wrong has been done mm-hmm. that has to offer the forgiveness. I really don't think it is, it is competent or a, for a person who is not directly affected. I know, for instance, that if someone kills your son or your daughter or your loved one, and you have heard mothers or, or, or grandmothers or relatives or brothers or sisters say, well, I, for, I forgave him. Well, I have a problem with that because I think that forgiveness has to come. As a matter of fact, the, he says, if your brother offends you, mm-hmm. you forgive him. Sure. He says, forgive one another. As, and, and if we, if we look at that, that passage of Scripture that says, if, if your brother offends you, then you, you confront him. And if he, if he repents, you forgive him. Yes. So I, I think that when sometimes we get a little carried away with ourselves and perhaps we just want to show how loving we are, how Christ-like we are, how, how, how merciful we are, and we interpose ourselves and our, our viewpoint into a situation where we really have no, no right to be. It is the person who has suffered the affront, the offense, the, whatever it is that has to, has to uh, forgive the wrongdoer or the wrongdoing. And, and that is the person I think that God wants to, to look at, sure. the, the person who, who has to suffer the hurt, mm-hmm. the person who, who needs to find that love within him, that love of Christ within him, to say, notwithstanding the difficulty that you have put me through, notwithstanding the wrongdoing you've inflicted upon me, that I, because I have the love of Christ in me, and I, I, I'm going to emphasize this throughout, mm-hmm. because without the love of God, none of us can really, really forgive everything that, that you know, has been done to us or against us. Sure, sure. And it is a matter of the heart, because... When we're carrying unforgiveness, anger, and resentment, our heart grow cold and, you know, it's like stone. So forgiveness really releases us from that and give us a changed heart. Well, I think it's Psalm 66, 18 mm-hmm. that says, if you regard iniquity, and, and I think David is praying and he's saying, you know, I know that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me when I pray. Mm-hmm. And if we find ourselves in a position where that we are praying and, and not knowing perhaps that God is not hearing us, you know, then, then I remember the very first time, if I may just put a little lightness into this and without being frivolous, the very first time I uh, appeared before the Court of Appeal in the Caribbean, I got up and I made a wonderful introductory speech and and then uh, then the, the the presiding the chief justice said, well, Mr. Weeks, when are you going to begin addressing me? And I thought I had been addressing for the last two minutes, mm-hmm. but apparently no sounds were coming <laughs> out of out out of my mouth. Uh-huh. You know, 
So, but it's it's a heart thing, as you say. Sure. That if the heart is in the right place, we we can find it within us to forgive. Right now, sometimes it's not possible to for the person who offended us. It's not possible to, you know, speak with them about it because for whatever reason they no longer want to have anything to do with you. So in that case, it's still okay to forgive because you don't need the other person to acknowledge you for you to forgive them. Well, I, I, that, that too, you know, let us, let us, let us, as Christians, mm-hmm. remember one thing: mm-hmm. we cannot outlove God. Right. We cannot outdo God. Mm-hmm. And the standard that I use, and as I said, we all children of God, we all read the word, we all have our responsibility to God. But I, I look at God's standards. Whatever the question, whatever the debate, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, what will Christ have me do? What, what is the standard that God has set for us? Mm-hmm. And that is the standard. Because let, let's go back a little bit into the Old Testament and look at Second. Uh, Second uh, Chronicles mm-hmm. chapter seven and verse fourteen, mm-hmm. and it says, "If that word that that word, I, whenever I see it, I re- reminded of the Greek uh, word in. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, you know, I, I think that forgiveness." is based on the position of the offender. If the offender has not, and I'm going to deal with that later, I guess, in another, in a, in another way, but if the offender cannot be reached, and, and that's a very you know, challenging question, like in cases of murder, mm-hmm. you've heard it, like the, 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 the killer has not been even caught, and, and you're saying, I am forgiving him, isn't that doesn't that result? I mean, involve some prejudgment. When when you say you have forgiven the person and the person has not confessed his sin, because mm-hmm. he says if you conf- he says John one nine John one one nine says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if but God is if we confess our sin, God is faith. If again we confess our sin. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, you know, I, I have a problem with the proposition that if a person cannot be reached or is unknown or the person is stubborn and has not confessed his sin, that you can say, well, I'm going to forgive you anyway. I do have a problem with that, which I have mentioned in the book, that it is, to me, it is, going beyond the, 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 the standard set by the Almighty God because forgiveness requires requires repentance. It requires an, a, a, an invitation to forgive. Sure. I will, of course, I will admit that sometimes we, we forgive and we can forgive without a, a request for forgiveness. Let me give an example, if I may. Hello. This is your host, Beverly. I'm in the studios today, Talk It Up Radio Show, speaking to Dr. John Weeks. Welcome back, Dr. Weeks. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for holding. Um, um, okay, so you were continuing about, uh, I think we touched a little bit on what is repentance and how does it affect forgiveness. Yes. Is that where you were on that? Yeah, and of course, we were talking about whether it can be unilateral, whether there has to be a, a request for forgiveness, whether if the person was not known or the person did, was not within your your view, mm-hmm. whether you could forgive. And I wanted to to, to answer that in two further ways. Uh, firstly, I'm looking at Math, uh, Luke's Gospel and Luke 17, 3. I think I alluded to it earlier, on, but I would just mm-hmm. like to read it. It says, mm-hmm. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. I think the word is there, and I'm not taking a single verse of Scripture and, and make a doctrine of it, but when we look at the, all the, the Scripture verses uh, in a systematic way, we find that it, it is not an automatic thing. Of course it can be. Uh, if 
for instance, if I borrowed a small sum of money uh, from you, I think that's where I was when we, before the break, mm-hmm. and you never paid me back, oh, it's a small amount of money, and I said, forget it. And uh, I, that's it. It's over. I will not look for it. I'll not ask you for it. I will not hold it against you because you didn't give me back my $5. Mm-hmm. But suppose it was 500 or 5000 I mean, surely we have to admit that your view to that would require more than just a unilateral saying, forget it. <laughs> right. We're talking about a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And, but the other thing that I think we, we overlook is that a lot of us do not really understand what forgiveness is. Right. We think by saying, forget it. Or, or if I, and I've heard, especially in the Caribbean, you hear, oh, you know, I, I forgive, but I don't forget. Well, that's not God's forgiveness. Because when God forgives us, he blots out the transgression. And he, he, it, as though he treats us as though we have never sinned. So that, I think, is part of the problem when people say, like, somebody hurt your son and you forgive him and you don't even know who he is and he hasn't asked you for forgiveness you are saying that you want to move away from it. You don't want to hold it, and so you're going to let it go. But if that same person, I, I had a friend, let me, let me just make a further illustration. I had a, a friend who was a minister, and he said, you know, I instantly forgive everything anyone ever does to me. Whatever it is, I instantly forgive it. So I, I said, so, well, suppose you had a friend, and he left him at home with your daughter, and he raped your daughter. Would you forgive him? Oh, yes, I would. Would you call the police? No, I wouldn't. Okay, very good. You are an ex- excellent forgiver. So, all right, would you have him, would you leave him alone in your house with your daughter a second time or a third time? Oh, no, I wouldn't. So I said, you see, that's the difficulty there. Because when we forgive in God's term, there has to be reconciliation. And if there's no reconciliation, and if there's no restitution, then forgiveness is not complete. Okay, absolutely. But reconciliation comes from both parties um, being willing to reconcile. Is that correct? And and this is another reason why that it, there has to be an overture made by the... Of, because you could say, for instance, and, and that's a very good point, that I could say, I forgive you, and because you, you told an untruth on me, but, you know, I am big. I am going to move up beyond it. And, and so, but you don't have to. You may think you may still hold something in your heart against me. And so that's why I say that, that forgiveness is a bilateral thing. It's not unilateral. Because if, if uh, I just simply say, I forgive you, you may not forgive me. We may, it may be that we had a misunderstanding. And I am willing to, to, to go beyond it and, for, and forget it. But you are not. So that is another reason why it is necessary for the parties. You, you, you know the, the scripture that says if you're at the, at the altar and you're about to worship God, you're about to offer your gifts there to God, and you remember that you have ought against your friend. Now look at this. Scripture doesn't say, well, you're at the altar, just say, oh, I forget it. It's small. I forgive him. Or, you know, but you have to go to him, leave your gift there, go to, go to your friend and be reconciled and then come back. So you're absolutely right. It's, uh, although it can in special circumstances be unilateral, it is uh, in, in, in effect a bilateral thing that both of us is like the kiss and makeup. That kind of thing. Great, great. Okay. Now, before we, we're going to talk about how forgiveness operate within the marriage. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick station break again. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Talk It Up radio show. We have uh, as our guest today, Dr. John Weeks, speaking on the topic of forgiveness. Okay. So, Dr. Weeks, please tell us how does forgiveness operate within the marriage? Yes. And, and you know, on my way here this afternoon, it just happened that I heard a lady who specializes in in divorce matters talking about divorce and uh, the matrimonial offense that we put at the very height of our objective lists or our list of objections. You know, let, let me just say, within any marriage, there has got to be God. And if God is not in this marriage, as you know, the old people say that marriages were made in heaven, and, and in a sense, they are very right. Because 
I think that one of one of the areas in which I get into trouble when I talk to a group, especially of women, <laughs> is that is the what ifs that I have to confront. What if my husband uh, commits adultery? What if my husband beats me? What if my husband is dishonest? And the what ifs, the what ifs, the what ifs. And you know, we are dealing here with high human emotions because in the in the normal marriage there are a lot of things that go on and uh, the husband or the wife would especially the poor wife she's the one who normally has to put up with more than I'm sorry I'm not being prejudiced here <laughs> but I think it's a fact that the, the the husband tends to take more liberties within the marriage than than the wife he he would arbitrarily buy a new car decide he's going to go pay down on a trip without consulting her he would tell the occasion you know on truth and all of that and the wife normally you know gets a little angry but she continues to do her wifely duties and then the day came when she discovers to her horror and dismay that uh he has committed adultery and we are assuming f- for this purpose that he admits it or that the evidence is at large and at this time she becomes devastated and my counsel is that we have to start from the perspective of God and Jesus of course uh his and God's attitude towards divorce God hates divorce God doesn't like divorce when asked about it Jesus said that uh that in the beginning it wasn't so because God's intention was that whom he joins together man and woman by the way uh that they should not be put apart that man should not run the, put them asunder and but he said because Moses because of the hardness of your heart granted a bill of divorcement and and that seemed to have been the only exception that Jesus w- was willing to to accept that because of man's hardness of heart that the old law uh provided for divorces for uh for adultery now of course in the modern law we had you know the acid test we had adultery we have cruelty we have insanity and we have desertion but none of those were uh within the scope of what Jesus talked about when he talked about divorce and of course today we don't have cruelty and in in and insanity and desertion anymore although they happen what we have to prove today to get a divorce is that the marriage has irretrievably broken down and so having said all of that my my advice my counsel whenever i have to counsel is that god doesn't like divorce and that within the marriage forgiveness has to operate regardless of the offense and that's why i started off with the little things like lying and overspending and so forth before i came to adultery mm-hmm. because a sin in god's view is a sin there's no such thing as little sin he said even the 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 little j- jokes we make from time to time even mm-hmm. the little that they are sin before right. god right. in the old testament in leviticus he says even where a person sinned by in error in ignorance that that sin also had to be atoned so here's where the hard part comes in that I I will never ever 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 tell a woman or a man that regardless of what's going on in the marriage you can't get a divorce. Right. Because being a divorced person does not does not extricate does not uh banish you from w- within the embrace of God's forgiveness. Right. But I would have to ac- counsel that if the other party sins seven times a day and comes to you seven times a day and asks for forgiveness as a christian you are bound to forgive that is god's standard and it doesn't matter whether it's theft or lying or cheating or adultery and shamefully i must say I use that word without apology that when we look at the statistics in the world today we find that christians lag not at all behind in the in in the in divorce rates that if you speak to our uh, most 4 5 6 out of every 10 couples you speak to in the world today you find oh I've been divorced or oh, I'm divorced and and that's okay for the world 
because they operate on a different wavelength. But the, the fact is that Christians ought to apply the standard of forgiveness. And if they were doing this, there would be quite you know, a, a reduction in divorces. At the same time, it is, it, it is really putting the egg on the chicken. Because if you are a Christian man, then you should not be going out there breaking the law, breaking God's law, committing sins that are against God's ordinances. Right. So the, the, what I do counsel is that if I am not going to tell you if he's beating, you, beating up on you and you feel that your life is in danger, that you must stay there and be killed because I don't think Christ would want that for you. And, and the fact remains that when it comes to uh, divorce and forgiveness, mm-hmm. it's a matter entirely within the, the, the parameter of, of the person who is being wrong, within yes. the, to work it out. But remember this, a lot of divorces break down, A, beca- a lot of um, marriages, I'm sorry, break down because after a while, there's, there is a refusal to communicate. Right. They stop talking to one another. And some wives uh, stop doing his, her wifely duties, or whether it's domestic or, or filial or otherwise. Mm-hmm. And some husbands likewise and, and, and so forth. But all of these things show us up as lacking direction, lacking understanding of the will of God for us. Because if I, when Christ talk about he that is hunger, hungry, feed him, and, who, and he that is thirsty, you know, give, give, give drink, we're doing it as unto Christ. Mm-hmm. And this is where I run into a lot of resentment and a lot of, you know, uh, hard, sh- hard, stiff-necked people, uh, couples, they say, well, you don't understand. And I said, yes, I do. Because God, I, am, I can only tell you what, God, what thus saith the Lord. I can't tell you that if you do this that you're going to go to hell because that's not, that's not, that's not necessarily true. Mm-hmm. But the, the fact is that we forget who we are in Christ. And I'm, as a matter of fact, in this book, and one of the things that I met with this group of women and they said, no, I don't agree with that, is that I said divorce is not an option for Christians. And by all I'm saying by that is this is what the, the law of God says. Now, most of the time, we forget that when we do good things, we're not doing it. If your husband starts mistreating you and, and you know, your life is not in danger, you'd continue to love him because you are love him, loving him as unto God. And, 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 and the other way around, if, if your wife, you think, is not all that you would expect her to be, continue to love because they say love can overcome and can conquer a multiple of uh, a, a multitude of evil. And sure, and and when the scripture says that husbands should love their wives as Christ loved the church, I'm, and gave it himself for it, now that is that is a powerful love. Any it, wife that's love like that would not even contemplate divorce. Exactly, and a husband that loves his wife would would not would not doesn't matter if she commits adultery. Wouldn't do anything to hurt her, her but, you it, know. It, Right. Even mm-hmm. she commits adultery. Mm-hmm. Okay. Forgive her as unto the Lord. Because you see, you, you know, uh, the, the, other, the other thing I think I, I, I said in the book is that if you, if you marry a woman and you find that whatever, whatever the problems are with her, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, there are so many things in the world that she can do that would irk you. Okay. You, you, you divorce her. What do you do? You're going to go look for another woman. Is she going to be perfect? Is she not going to have defects? Is she not going to? Is she? There's no perfect person. That's that's the other thing that we f- we forget. There's no perfect woman. <laughs> There's no perfect man. Exactly. Christ only is perfect. Mm-hmm. Every man, every man that ever walked the face of this earth, has has committed sin because the, the scripture says that all have sinned. So I am saying by saying that I'm saying that by this by saying that that if if we are going to divorce one person because he or she has committed a wrong within the marriage. Mm-hmm. What, it, what, what guarantees do we have that the next person and the next person and the next person and the next person? We've heard of people getting married seven times. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they haven't found what they're looking for. They haven't found that Mr. Right or that Miss right. right. So, But as Christians, a lot of times that if we put Christ first and mm-hmm. say, what would Christ have me do? Right. Then 
I think the divorce rate would go down, and I think that we we would we would show the world that we are we are mm-hmm. different. We sure, are sure. Now um, we got a text message from a listener um, wanted to ask you a question. Uh, the question is, what would you say to adult children who has not forgiven a parent and no longer speak to, speaks to that parent? What would your advice be to um, that adult child? Well, you know, Scripture is very, very, very clear. And I mean, if we were living back in, in the days of pre-Christ days, that child uh, would, would be eligible for, for being stoned. It says, children, uh, you know, obey your parents. Uh, it says that a foolish child does not follow the instruction of his, of his father and his mother. That's why one of the commandments that is most often, is most often uh, repeated is that honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long or that it may be well with thee. The fact is the word honor in, in that context means to hold in very high esteem. And of course, we can't change anyone's heart, whether it's our parent, our, our loved one, our child. And all we can do, all we can do is not ever to give up, not ever to give up on the child, but to continue praying. And, and because I don't know what the prior relationship with the child wa- uh, was or were, in, you know, what problems they had, but I do believe scripture when it says that if you if you bring up a child the way he, he would go, that later on he would not depart from it. And that doesn't mean that the child will not go astray. Yes. But one day that child is going to somehow, God is going to bring that child right back into the fold. Yeah. But my advice is just to continue to pray and to reach out. I mean, I, I have had in, in my, in, in my uh, walk with Christ, I've had uh, ministries where I have gone out into prisons, I've gone out into the world and tried to, to, to evangelize, and I've met, oh, absolute uh, repulsion, hatred. No, 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 you come here, don't talk to me. But I continue, and eventually it's amazing that those people, those persons would, would you know, because the Word of God is, is, is sharper than any two-edged sword. But let me be, m- be more specific. Let me say continue to pray. Because you cannot change any man's heart, yeah. but God can. Do- Dr. Weeks, I have one more text question for you. Um, the question is, in your experience, have you found um, the act of forgiveness harder among family or um, friends and strangers? Have you, do you have a, an idea, like statistically, where you find forgiveness hard to come by? Well, as I said, forgiveness is hard, period. Okay. But if, if we apply the, the godly principle, the biblical principle, that it is not as hard as we may think it is. Because most of the time, you know, uh, let me mention another thing that, that, that obstructs forgiveness is selfishness. Uh, and if we, I know that I may, I may get criticized for saying this, but husbands and wives, you know, the husband thinks, oh, the wife is mine. I own her. So it's like my horse, if he, if he goes and commits a trespass, I am going to whip it like, like Balaam, you know, whipped his, his donkey. Yes. The, the, the fact is that we, we, don't own, we don't own our wives. Right. We don't own our children. They belong to God. I met a lady once who said, I will never forgive God because he took my 24-year-old who was bright and just finished university. And I said, that child, your child? He wasn't your child. He was God's child. That's true. You were just the vehicle that brought him into the world. <laughs> I know. And yep. God took him out in his... So if you, if you have a child that is, is, is stiff-necked and, 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 and whatever, yep. just continue praying. I can't give you any other advice but to continue praying and never give up. Yeah, I'm going to tell you also, I had that similar experience when my brother was killed in a car accident back in, uh, I want to say, 87, 88. And I was really, really angry with God. Mm-hmm. at that time and I beg forgiveness and um, I've gotten over it but it was just I mean he was so young you know yes. uh, Dr. Weeks we really um, appreciate you coming in I want to thank you for your time I'm going to ask if you want to you know tell us about your book or give us some contact information we're getting close to that hour where um, DJ Countryman and Genius are in the house with their um, equipment ready to go for the Jamming Vibes radio show go ahead Dr. Weeks yeah well all of my books are you know uh, can be at, obtained at, at Amazon uh, they're not 
in, in bookstores per se, but if you go to Amazon, uh, you can find Understanding Forgiveness. You can, under, you can find Understanding the Doctrine of the Trinity. You could, under, you could find understa- Understanding the Existence of God. You know, that book I wrote with a, a great deal of passion because I think that we, we need to know who God is. We need to understand who God is before yes, we can serve him. that's true. And then, of course, there is uh, Escape or Perish the Rapture. It's a sort of a, a biblical novel in that, that depicts the end time and what happens when Christ would have come and, and taken the church out of the world and that leave behind all kinds of you know, problems with Satan and Satanism and, and so forth. We understand. And uh, but the, my church is uh, Gateway to Heaven Church www.gatewaytoheavenchurch.org. You go there every day. You see my blogs. I write daily about some aspect of of, of scripture, and uh, you can also email me at weeksdrjohn at yahoo dot com. Uh, you can even call me at four zero seven four eight seven zero eight two six. I am very open day or night for prayer, for counseling, especially suicide counseling. Oh, boy. It's, it's one of my yes. specialties. And uh, because I say, if you don't want your life anymore, give it to me. Okay. And I'll give it to God. Awesome. And uh, I heard you mention earlier when you were talking with Beverly that you have a book, or is it just one or a couple of books that you have written? And how can people get in touch with um, you or find the books for sale? Well, oh, I thought I said that. Okay. All my books are available at Amazon.com. You did. Yeah, Amazon, uh, and anywhere, all the, you know, books a million, uh, wherever they uh, have online books, you can, you know, you, and you can also, I, my, my books on, oh, I forgot my thought, my uh, Cry Out My Soul, uh, uh, poems, sonnets, short stories, songs, spiritual songs, verses, and you could get those by contacting me by email, Weeks Dr. John at yeah, at uh, yahoo.com or you could call me on the phone or email me and I and or, or text me whatever my text my phone it operates as a text as whatever yes 407-487-0826 awesome and yes alright thank you so much Dr. Weiss for coming you have a great evening and we appreciate you taking your time to come and share with us on the subject of forgiveness which is a topic we could talk about that for hours on ending and um, like every other topic um, we really have some good people that come in the studios and share their viewpoints. Thank you so much, sir. Have a great evening. It was good to be here. Thank you you very much.